the 25 market valuation question in, in unit one is more difficult than the other three questions in that um, it's much more subjective when it comes to interpreting the mark scheme. Seeing what's going to lift you from a, a level four to a level five, that can be quite tricky. Um, but one thing you can do to greatly maximize your chances of, of scoring a, a level five is choosing the right question. And in order to do that, you want to choose the question which allows you to talk about um, merit goods and demerit goods. So you're looking out for three key themes here, um, pollution, healthcare, and education. Um, so say context number one, if you're looking at your evaluation question for context number one, it allows you to talk about any of those three key themes, obviously you're going to choose context number one. I mean, sometimes, so if you take a look at June 2012, um, here both context number one and context number two are quite nice in that um, context number one talks about the mining industry and pollution related to the mining industry, uh, whereas context number two talks about the NHS and actually that link ties in with, with healthcare. Um, <clears throat> So if your question is not as nice as that one and, and you're deter deciding between um, the, two, the two data questions, yeah, you're just looking out for one of those three key themes. So let's assume you've chosen the right question and um, we're going to look at June 2013 here and let's say for the sake of argument to say um, the question four is the one we've opted for. Um, so question four is a question on um, education and financing of education. So um, in the extracts, it references um, tuition fees as one potential method of financing. And essentially, the question is asking you, um, is there a, a preferable method to financing education as opposed to tuition fees? OK, so um, if you look at the, the Mark Scheme rubric, there are four different kind of tiers of um, four different tiers of marks on, on offer. So the first of these is knowledge. Um, this comes primarily through um, kind of definitions and showing to the examiner that you understand um, the content in unit one. Um, the next tier, if you like, is application. Um, this comes from referencing the um, extracts. So you need to make sure you're making explicit references to the extracts, and I'll show you exactly what that means um, in just a second. The next tier is um, analysis, and in my opinion, this comes primarily through um, the use of graphs. And then your last one, evaluation, is slightly trickier. And I think I'll probably I'll, I'll run you through this um, June 2013 question four and give you um, give you some evaluation points. But I think I'm going to make a separate uh, video um, dedicated entirely to um, almost go to evaluation points. So these are the points you're going to go to um, for almost every single essay, regardless on the content. So let's take a look at question uh, four, June 2013. Um, question on education. And remember, um, earlier on in the video, I, I spoke about how important it is to, to make sure you're choosing the question on merit goods, demerit goods. Um, reason for this being in that um, paragraph one is going to be your um, is, is going to be the, the paragraph where you're hitting your knowledge and your application marks. Um, and in, in terms of doing that, I think it's Definitions is, is a very easy way to sign post to the examiner. Um, you know what you're talking about. You actually understand the content in unit one. Um, so in terms of your definitions, if you're talking about merit goods, demerit goods, it's very, very easy to see what you're going to define. You're simply going to define merit goods um, or, or demerit goods, depending on, on the actual specific question. And then off the back of that, you can define um, private benefits, external benefits, private costs, external costs, again, depending on the specific uh, specifics in the question. So uh, if you look at my response to June 2013 question four, um, I've done exactly that. And then the last point you need to make in, um, in, in your first introductory paragraph, you want to introduce one side of the argument. So here I've spoken about the fact that uh, merit goods tends to be under provided by the market. So this is going to be a key theme running through the entirety of your essay. Um, looking at ways of addressing this specific type of market failure. So essentially um, referencing the extract, so I've made an explicit reference to, um, to the extract by, by, by including a line reference and also introducing that key theme of merit goods. And then kind of off the back of that, it's going to be very easy to, um, to, to there's going to be a central theme running through the entirety, the entirety of the essay in that in subsequent paragraphs, I'm going to be um, explaining how the government um, can address um, this specific case of market failure. So paragraph two, you're going to be progressing from your knowledge and application marks to your analysis marks. I mean, the easiest way to do this by, is by drawing a diagram. So 
Um, in terms of structure, this is going to look very similar to your, um, to your um, question three response in that you're going to draw your diagram it needs to be fully labeled and essentially you're going to explain what's going on. Um, and I think I, I, I've, I've stressed how important it is that you're choosing the question that talks about merit goods and demerit goods. Um, principal reason for this is that um, the diagram, it's, it's self-evident which diagram you're going to draw. You're going to draw um, the marginal social benefit, marginal private benefit type diagram or in, in the case of um, demerit goods, it might, it's going to be the um, marginal social cost and marginal private cost type diagram. Um, <clears throat> so yes, very similar in structure to paragraph, um, so to, to, to your question three response. I think key words here are, are one way that you can signpost the examiner, you know what you're talking about. So um, you know when you're drawing a demerit good, diagram or a merit good diagram that essentially your socially optimal level quantity um, is going to differ from your from the market quantity and that's going to lead to um, a difference between the the um, allocatively efficient or the, the socially optimal um, quantity and the the market quantity and that's an instance of market failure um, so it's going to be very important that you signpost this to the examiner um, and then evaluation points. So I think from paragraph one on, sorry, from paragraph two onwards rather, um, you want to be evaluating every single point that you make, or, or rather you want one evaluation point or at least one evaluation point per paragraph. Um, so here, if you're talking about merit goods and demerit goods in paragraph two, then you want to be talking, you, you want to be evaluating um, the extent to which um, these goods possess either an external benefit or an external cost. So here I've done that by, by um, alluding to the fact that um, students primarily profit from, well, stu students are the primar primary beneficiary from education. Um, so is it really the case that um, education has wider benefits to, to society and, and thereby um, provides society with those external benefits, those external benefits to uh, um, accrue to people outside of the, the actual transaction. So following on from paragraph two, where you've um, introduced market failure in the context of the question, uh, paragraph three, you're always going to be talking about how the government can address this market failure. Um, so in the, in the instance of merit goods, like we have in the question, um, you're going to be talking about the, f the fact that the, the government could subsidise um, merit goods to reduce this underconsumption, thereby correcting market failure. On the flip side, if the question was on demerit goods, you'd be talking about how the, how, how the government could tax um, the demerit goods, um, lowering consumption and addressing market failure in that way. Okay, so it's all about restoring that allocatively efficient um, market quantity, or sorry, allocatively efficient quantity, um, which I spoke about in paragraph two. Um, so you're going to draw your diagram here. It's always good to, to, to try and have, include at least two diagrams in your 25 mark evaluation question. And I think the easiest way to do this, paragraph two, you draw your externalities diagram. Paragraph three, um, you draw your externalities diagram, but then you show a further shift so that either reflects the, um, the subsidy or the tax imposed by the government, um, which restores that socially optimal um, quantity. Um, last point to make on um, on paragraph three. So remember, you want to be including an evaluation point for every paragraph um, from paragraph two onwards. Um, and the evaluation point that I would include for paragraph three, um, so remember you're talking here about subsidies and taxes. Um, here, I would always make a point about elasticities. It's a very easy point to make any time you draw a diagram. But essentially, um, the size of the, the tax or the subsidy imposed by the government um, in order to restore this allocatively efficient quantity is going to be dependent on elasticities. Okay, so if the demand curve is very inelastic, okay, the government is going to have to do more to change market quantity, and it's going to have to do more in terms of its taxes and its subsidies um, in order to, to restore that optimal quantity. Paragraph four, I like to term alternative forms of government intervention. So remember in paragraph three, we've already spoken about either taxes or subsidies. And paragraph four, we're going to talk about alternative measures that the government could introduce um, in order to correct this market failure. 
Um, so in this case, I'm talking specifically about um, education, about education, if you like. So we're saying that if the government um, raises students' awareness of the true benefits of education, um, that information gap is going to decrease and the demand um, that comes from students for education is going to increase. And naturally, as a result of that, um, market quantity is going to increase and that underconsumption of education is going to fall. Um, the very easy way to, to evaluate this is by talking about government failure. So essentially government failure is when um, the government intervenes in the market yet it doesn't get things quite right. Um, government failure, you don't need to explicitly say that um, government failure occurs when um, the government intervenes in the market and actually um, it, it, ma it makes things worse rather than better. All you need to say here is that um, the, the government essentially might not get things quite right and that's sufficient um, to show your understanding of government failure. Um, so remember government failure, um, it's, it's one of those, you can use this as an evaluation point for any form of government intervention but I think um, in paragraph three, when you're talking specifically about taxes and subsidies and you're drawing your tax and subsidy diagram, it makes more sense to talk about elasticities um, in, as an evaluation point in this paragraph rather than in paragraph four. So paragraph five, I like to um, introduce anything in the extracts that um, you, clearly, you clearly do need to speak about, but you haven't had the chance to do so up until now. I mean, sometimes the extracts and the question will be so straightforward um, that this paragraph is actually redundant. And largely on the whole, I think that um, if you've produced four good paragraphs up until now, um, paragraph five, it's not, it's not critically important to get you up to that um, 22 to 25 mark bracket. Um, but here, so we're talking about extract B, line 13. I think it's clearly, uh, it's clearly the case that you need to talk about philanthropy um, in the context of these extracts. Um, <clears throat> It's quite straightforward. So here, um, the actual, all they're saying is that philanthropy, oh, I can get my words out, philanthropy um, is one alternative to um, the charging of tuition fees. Uh, it's quite a straightforward point, but in terms of your evaluation, so they, they speak about the fact that um, this form of funding doesn't raise a significant amount of money. And also, I think this is a good point to make and uh, a point that you can make when concerning any form of government intervention is that um, philanthropy, it doesn't, it doesn't um, rely on the market mechanism. Philanthropy um, doesn't rely on incentives, private, private uh, benefits, private costs, etc. Essentially, you're, you're relying on the goodwill of um, rich donors. Um, and in the, in, in, the, in the context of Unit 1 economics, where you're talking about the market mechanism um, and the allocation of scarce resources um, by the invisible hand um, through the markets, um, kind of relying on, relying on means outside of the market mechanism can be quite dangerous and it can lead to an inefficient um, allocation of resources. Okay, so paragraph six or paragraph five, if you haven't um, included that additional paragraph we've just spoken about, is going to be your concluding remarks. It's going to be your final paragraph. Um, so some teachers might say, uh, try to introduce an original point of view or try to come to some sort of um, definitive conclusion for this um, in this paragraph. But I mean, that's not really, that's not really entirely necessary. If you think that um, you're an AS level student and you've just spent half an hour reading through for a few extracts um, and you're answering a very, very broad question. I mean, this is the type of question that actually, I mean, PhD econometricians, that would be their entire life's work. How should we fund, um, how should we fund higher education? What's, what's the best method? Um, so in half an hour, it's hardly likely that you're going to come to any sort of um, any sort of answer which, which, is, which kind of merits any academic truth. Um, so my, my advice to you would be keep it open-ended, um, summarise your key points, which is very important, and essentially you want to be saying, um, okay, the government could do this, it could do this, it could do this, uh, yet it is dependent on this, this, and this. And obviously this is going to be, um, these, these kind of conditional dependencies are going to be what you've spoken about previously in your essay. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tutoring videos. Remember that full notes and other resources are available on my tutoring website at idktuition.com. And if you'd like me to cover anything in particular, please leave me a message in the comments below or on Twitter at TomDavies32.